All right, let's see if we can make this work, folks. Uh, we're having some trouble, so let me make a couple of quick adjustments. And um, we'll have to do this by um, live on, uh, let's see, I need that one and that one. Now let me make sure Paul can hear me. Paul, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, we're going to hope we don't get feedback through the uh, computer. Um, so this is pretty crude. And But I'm going to sit here and hold this uh, can uh, my, my phone, <laughs> and we'll Facebook Live it this way. So, All right. All right. So if someone's watching and could kind of give us a, hey, you, could, you can hear Paul, so uh, uh, wave, or I don't, know how, I don't know how this thing works. Um, or leave a comment. I'm going to go over and turn this on over here and watch it with the sound down. All right. Can can you hear me out there? Hello. No. Oh, there's Nathan. So, Kelsey. Okay, there was a lag. Yep. I, sounds like we're good. Okay. Good. All right. Well, sorry for the uh, um, uh, situation we run ourselves into. Um, I think everybody in the country is trying to use Zoom. And um, so we've tried it oh, for about the last 10 minutes to try to go live. And um, well, it just, uh, well, it just didn't work. So we're improvising. So I'm holding uh, my uh, cell phone so that you can see Paul and we'll use the audio on uh, my laptop and hope you can hear well enough. Uh, we'll, we'll try to figure something out for next week. So, hey, uh, welcome to our first ever online Bible study. Um, not by like anything but more than necessity. Uh, we have a number of folks who gather on Sunday mornings at nine in various uh, classes to study the scriptures together and so I thought, well, let's see if we can if we can make it work. And um, so I invited Paul, who teaches one of our classes, who also happens to be fairly tech savvy since he works for a tech company, and uh, see if he had to kind of join in and maybe we could have a conversation. And maybe next week we might do this a little bit differently where actually you can participate um, on your phone or on your laptop or tablet. So... Um, if you, if, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, my name's uh, Todd, Pastor Todd, and I pastor Snow Hill Baptist Church, and this is just an improv improvisation, and there on the screen being attacked by the Tyrannosaurus Rexes is uh, Paul Littleton, and, uh, and so, um, Paul, would you, uh, would you lead us in a, a prayer? I will. God, as we come to you this morning, we're thankful that we can still gather, that we live in a day and age where technology allows us the opportunity to still connect, even if it's virtually. And um, we know that for much of history, that hasn't been the case. And so when people went through a crisis like we're going through now, that uh, there was even greater isolation than what we feel today, but that we can see each other's faces, we can hear each other's voices, and uh, we can still speak uh, together and with you, uh, hearing from you through the voices of one another as well. And so we thank you for the opportunity this morning to gather together, uh, to congregate and to be your people together, even in this way, uh, to look into your word, uh, to hear from you, to be encouraged. And uh, we just pray that as we have this time together, that your blessings will be upon it, and uh, that we might hear from you in the midst of all that's going on around us. We thank you again for the time, and uh, we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Paul. Um, one thing that uh, uh, we thought about, or I thought about, in fact, I'm, I'm actually s stealing the idea from a friend of mine who pastors in Virginia. You all have heard uh, Jason before. Uh, preach here at church, and um, uh, we participated in 
an online Bible study with his church on Wednesday, and uh, he asked the question, um, you know, let, uh, about looking at the text that we hear God saying, uh, do not be afraid or fear not. And so the very first instance of this is in uh, Genesis 15. So I'm not going to read all of Genesis 15. I'm trusting that you have maybe your Bible and a cup of coffee, or if you're not a coffee drinker, you've got your morning drink, orange juice, glass of chocolate milk, or you know something like that would work. Um, and you could you could read to the end of the chapter, but I'm going to read uh, from John Golingay's translation. Uh, Subsequently, Yahweh's word came to Abram in a vision. Don't be afraid, Abram. I'll be your deliverance, and your wages will be very big. Abram said, Lord Yahweh, what will you give me when I'm going to die childless, and the heir of my household will be a man from Damascus, Eleazar? So Abraham said, Abram said, Here you have, haven't given me offspring. Here someone from my household will come into possession from me. But here Yahweh's words came to him. This man won't come into possession from you. No, nope, only someone who comes from inside you. He'll come into possession from you. He took him outside and said, Look at the heavens, please, and count the stars, if you can count them. And he said to him, That's what your offspring will be like. He trusted Yahweh, and he deemed it as faithfulness on his part. So, Paul, um, maybe one thing that uh, we could do is, is, is what would be um, kind of the setting? Uh, in other words, uh, this isn't the first instance that we've encountered Abram, uh, whose name in just a couple of chapters will be changed to our more familiar Abraham. Um, so, like, what, what, what started uh, Abram on his journey? Well, so, um, you know, I was, as I was reading this passage this week, I looked back at chapter 15 as well, or I'm sorry, 14. And, um, of course, the greater context is that God, Abraham was an, a resident of Ur, which would be in uh, what would have been the land of the Chaldeans, which would later be the Babylonians. And God called him to go to Canaan uh, or a land that he would show him and that he would plant him there in the land. And so Abram has been in the land for some time now. He's taken up residence. Uh, in chapter 14, it tells us that he has over 300 fighting capable men in his uh, his family, his entourage, his, uh, his group. And he's called to go to war with these other guys who uh, it, it mentions their kings. Um, the king of Sodom and the king of Gomorrah and the king of Aram and these other cities. But Abraham's no king. Uh, Abraham was promised this land by God some years ago, and yet he doesn't possess any of it. He's a, uh, he's a wandering vagabond who is some kind of herder, a uh, herder of flocks. And that's really all that he has at this point and doesn't have anything uh, really as far as the land goes that he can call his own other than his own family and possessions. And so there really hasn't been any fulfillment uh, regarding the promise that God had made aside from Abraham going from Ur into the land of Canaan and now there's a war that breaks out between four kings from the north and four kings from the land of Canaan. And the kings of uh, Canaan ask Abraham to help them, or Abram, to help them. He does, and when it's all over with, the kings come to him and say, okay, well, we need to talk about what you're due as the spoils of war from all of this. And Abram doesn't even take anything from that. He essentially seems to tell them that he's not going to be beholden to them. Uh, he's not going to take anything. The men that fought uh, for him, that, that are his men, would get their share. But as far as he was concerned, he he wasn't owed anything. And so we end chapter 14, and Abram still doesn't have anything. And then in chapter 
uh, 15, God makes this promise to Abram, and he's like, well, but, and we don't, it, it doesn't tell us how old Abram is at this point, but um, we turn immediately to the story of Ishmael in chapter 16. So he's still probably an old man at this point. He says that uh, my only heir is Eleazar of Damascus. He's not even a family member. And I guess he'll get all that I've got. He's got every reason in the world to question and to be skeptical and to be discouraged and to wonder what's going on. Uh, did God really mean what he said? Is he really going to do for me what he said he was going to do? Um, and, and I think that's some of the context. Uh, I mean, God, even in this vision later on in chapter 15, God says, well, yeah, I, I, I know, Heliazar is your heir, um, but guess what? Your descendant, you, you'll have descendants, and they'll be slaves in another land for 400 years, and then I'll bring you back. Uh, then I'll bring them back, and then they'll inherit the land. Well, I mean, in the midst of everything going on around us, if God came and said, hey, folks, settle down. In 400 years, all this is going to be over. But you're going to go through something that'll feel like slavery to you. I mean, it'll feel like a burden, and it's going to—it's just going to be terrible. Uh, but but you'll come back, and then you know everything will be good. Uh, would I be the kind of person who would believe God yeah. in the midst of that? And so I think that's some of the context that came to my mind. Yeah, you know, I think uh, when. When you get that background, one of the things that um, you you consider is, is so given that context um, that God comes to Abram and says, uh, fear not or don't be afraid, it still hasn't quite established uh, the things that maybe he's afraid of. So so um, Jason pointed out a couple of things I thought were pretty interesting. That So he wasn't afraid uh, to leave his country. He wasn't afraid to chart out on his own. He wasn't afraid to leave his family. So he had no fear of being, you know, disconnected or distant from his family. And um, two, he really didn't seem to be uh, afraid of, uh, of God. So, I mean, when he heard in chapter 12, you know, God's call to Abram, he packed up and left. So it's like, okay, I, I heard something. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head out. And so uh, he takes his, as you called it, his entourage or his clan, who, uh, you know, whoever is with him. Ironically, he's supposed to go by himself, leave his family, but he takes Lot with him, which is kind of an interesting aside that we don't kind of, you know, uh, connect often. And here he shows up in chapter 15, as you noted, an old man. And as you outlined it, it seems that what he's afraid of is that what got promised is not going to be fulfilled. And and so the, the, the don't be afraid is, is he's afraid of his future. He's afraid what his future will look like, what his family's future will look like. And I don't know, but that's fairly consistent with where we are today. Uh, it, it, is, it is an age, an era uh, that will be looked back on as a, a, an era of a pandemic. It'll, it'll, it will look differently in different parts of the world. It has been uh, experienced more severe in other places, and as of yet, we have no idea um, if it, you know, what, what it will be here ultimately. And so, there are a lot of folks who are scared, a lot of folks who are who are afraid. And uh, uh, Abram does something pretty interesting when God returns and reminds him of His promise. He talks back. I mean, look, uh, uh, we we are in 2020, and we are really polite people. And if we were afraid of something, if we were afraid of maybe something God would do or something God would say, we probably, in our politeness, would not let anybody know that it, you know uh, we were screaming at God in the backyard. But it seems like that's what's going on. Abram 
is not afraid to let God have it for not keeping his promise. What do you, what do you make of that? Yeah, I mean, gosh, I think all of us have probably been there um, where we we know what God's promises are and we trust it and we, we believe it and yet we don't trust it and we don't believe it at the same time um, because we are we're creatures of our circumstances and uh, part of God's way is to call us apart from our circumstances and tell us that our circumstances aren't what really drive our lives and aren't the things that give us importance and meaning and all of that that there is a meaning and a, a purpose and an importance that's apart from just the stuff that we don't control going on around us and that God is present and that he is at work and that he invites us to join us join him in that um even when we maybe don't fully understand what that is and and what that means and 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 for us as the church in particular not to just to be um participants that come along but now when we consider that in this world we are the body of christ uh, we are the presence of god that we're not just experiencing god's presence in this but now we are a part of god's presence mm. in this and we're bringing his presence into the world around us um, and, and that really was ultimately the purpose for abraham as well Mm -hmm. uh, Abraham was going to be the father of a nation, and the purpose of the nation was to be a light to the nations of the world, to bring God's presence and God's glory into the world. And we just, it, it, it's hard though not to be victims of our circumstances and, or, or creatures of our circumstances, and, and just look at what's going on, going on around us and, and questioning what's going on and questioning God's goodness and questioning God's presence and, and all of those things. I mean, I think those are, those are just natural things that come up. And so we are constantly asked, do I believe, do I trust in the, in the way that Abraham, in the midst of all that he was going through, you know, God said, here's what's going to happen. And Abraham believed and, it was credited to him as faithfulness or righteousness. And we're asked that in these times. And, and I think when all of this is over, uh, we're still going to be asked that question. Mm -hmm. right. And then there will be something else that comes up years from now, and we'll ask it again. Yeah, I wonder, you, you, you had an important uh, distinction in there, I think, that might be good for us practically. Not that, not that, frankly, all of that you said is, and it's just something that stood out, really. And that is that <clears throat> we tend to think that God's promises to us are um, come to us in such a way that we're just waiting to receive all of these promises. But what you've pointed out is Abraham, believing the promise, now made him a part of its fulfillment. So it, it relocates this sort of sense that we are, we are subject to our circumstances. We're passively affected by them, and we decide whether we're going to be happy with our circumstances or we're going to be mad with our circumstances or we're going to be disappointed or we're going to be joyous. But the shift you made in emphasis that, that ought, ought to probably be highlighted, I think, is that uh, Abram, and so us, who are in the body of Christ, actually become uh, an expression of the promise. So that is, the things that we do, how we respond, illustrate our confidence in the promise of God. Uh, and so, Abram wasn't perfect in his response. Uh, he, he, he wasn't perfect. Um, but he, at this particular point, is marked as a person who trusts that God's going to keep his promise. And that really is, when we get down to it, the essence of the gospel. The gospel is God is a God who keeps his promise. 
And the good news is that God did. And uh, the, the second thing is, is we probably uh, ought to draw out from something you said that um, we, we ought to have uh, uh, a different horizon for our expectations. I mean, really, uh, if, if Abram is going to have Isaac and he's going to be satisfied that his heir is going to come from his own body, um, as, as you noted it, um, the reality would be that the people who would benefit from the promise that he's committed himself to are going to become slaves. And while they go into slavery and return a, a larger people and maybe in some senses a more wealthy people, they still fumble along the way just like we do. And and so we probably shouldn't um, convince ourselves that this following uh, God's promise or submitting to God's promise ultimately fulfilled in Jesus is going to mean that we're probably going to avoid uh, the coronavirus that's going around. Uh, it, it may happen to us. And it won't be that um, somehow uh, that diminishes the promise that we've been given. The, the promise is that God's going to be faithful and we're drawn into his faithfulness in such a way that we bear witness that God keeps his promise. Even in days where it seems like, where'd he go? And I think mean, that's really kind of Abram's really, really, you know, shouting back at God. Hey, look, buddy, I left everything. You promised me a future and my future isn't looking too bright. And they're probably, like you said, any, any one of us who actually hadn't been in that place. And so instead of doing like the songwriters did, just telling God all about it and waiting to see what he says, we tend to run. In other words, we tend to just say, I'm out. This isn't what I signed up for. And the realities are is that's exactly what we signed up for. We signed up for the hope of a promise that's yet to come that we know was fulfilled in Christ, but we know is yet to be ultimately and completely fulfilled. That's what, we help, that's, what we, that's what drew us in. Because without that promise, um, we probably should have our houses bubble wrapped for the next 90 days. Because if this yeah, is... Yeah, I think that's... In, hmm. Yeah, go ahead. I, I think that's important. Um, we, we signed up for the long haul. Um, Abraham signed up for the long haul. You know, when God told him that uh, your your descendants will be in captivity for 400 years, he could have said, well, I mean, that's not at all what I thought you were talking about when you made this promise to me. And, you know, I'm, I'm not sure I'm still in it for that. But even after hearing that, he's still in it for that because he's in it for the long haul. He It's not just all about him, but it's all about his participation in what God is doing long term in the world and so he stuck with it so uh, you know if we were to go through difficulties from now until the end of our time here on this earth uh, the question is is it still worth it for us do we still trust god and is it still worth it for us and 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 would i still say yes i i believe and and i'm going to continue down this path yeah and, and i think the i think that um, the measure of you know what am I? What am I? Uh, what's the quality of my life going to be? Again, reverts back to the notion that this promise is really, I'm, I'm here. I'm this bucket that's receiving these blessings of promise, and I, I look over and my bucket is not as well. It's not as full as yours is. My bucket's not as. Uh, uh, it doesn't seem to be as as, as uh, filled with joyous experience as yours does, but the problem is we're not a bucket. Um, we 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 are act, we are actually made a part of the body, and as part of a body, we uh, give evidence of life. And so the things that we do together, even in times of crisis, the things that we band together to do, like make the best of our circumstances using some technology that I'm not very good at to make sure that we encourage people that there is good news out there and there is a promise. And um, we're, as many are trying to point to, you know, we're, we're going to make it through this. God's going to bear us through this. But along the way, <coughs> I 
I don't have the virus. Um, along the way, it simply means that we will be an illustration of that promise for those who are who are wondering if there is something to trust in. Is that how you would yeah, kind of I, draw in our role? Or exactly, yeah. Um, my class has heard this multiple times now, uh, even though I've been teaching for a short period of time. <coughs> Uh, that we're not containers, we are funnels. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're not meant to just hold and receive the blessings that God has and the promises of God, but we're meant to be a conduit through which God's blessings are poured out into the world around us. Yeah, I like the uh, picture of a funnel. I, conduit works. As, as sons who grew up uh, uh, the son of an electrical engineer, we've seen plenty of conduit. But I, I like the funnel in that none of us um, are able to carry that, if we can use the analogy a little bit, carry that electricity everywhere. But as God gives us those, we tend to funnel that to where we are. So we funnel that to the relationships that we're involved in, to our families, to our friends, to our neighborhoods, communities, the very places we're in, you know, real time and real space or what we call concrete reality that's where that gets meted out. We are not uh, somehow transformed into the transcendent uh, presence that can be everywhere. Instead, God has got a big old body, and we're part of it. And and as he uh, demonstrates His the fulfillment of his promise to us, we then funnel that to the very places and spaces where people have need. And so uh, I, I think that helps remind us that we're actually part of, we're, we, we are participating in the promise that has been fulfilled in Jesus. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Well, um, I don't know about you, but I remember that when I was teaching uh, all the way back with uh, uh, Rick Davis, you remember Rick, um, mm -hmm. that we had, uh, we had standard time and then Timberidge standard time. <clears throat> And so uh, we're going to do something opposite. Uh, normally what that means is we say we'll start at 9, and we might get there by 9.15 or 9.30. Today we started at 9, well, a little bit after because of the you know, trouble with the technology we had. But we're going to finish uh, about 40 minutes in. And uh, uh, next time, folks, what we, what we want to make available, if we can make it work better next time, and we hope again that this isn't a long-term sort of situation, but you might have a question. You might have a comment. You you might uh, <clears throat> have a thought. Uh, we we'll try to keep track of those in the comments on uh, the Facebook Live or whatever means we're able to get this thing working next week in a little bit better fashion. Uh, and and so we we want to try as best we can to involve as many of us as possible. And uh, so this will be recorded. It'll be on the page. So if someone missed it, you can point them there. Um, if worst case scenario, we have trouble with the technology again next week, we'll put a little note out, we'll record something and then post it. But we hope that doesn't happen. We actually hope that, you know, maybe this will work out a little bit better. Um, so uh, remember, um, in our uh, uh, times that we can get together like this, you know, remember to pray for each other, encourage each other. Don't forget to uh, call someone. Remember, call someone or write a note to someone who sits around you uh, every week or someone who you always make it a point to say hello to, but you're unable to this Sunday. And that way we can remember that uh, while technologies are great, getting something through that funnel, some, something direct from uh, someone we know and love and cares about us will be of great benefit. So I, I, think, um, I think I'll lead us out with a prayer. And uh, then at about half an hour or so, if, if you want, uh, click on the link to uh, our worship service. That ought to be really interesting. I'm going to try to have your faces all in my mind and mind's eye as uh, we try to provide as best we can uh, an opportunity for worship. So let's pray. And we'll, uh, we'll what they say, finish, I think is the word on this uh, phone, finish this Facebook Live. Lord God, uh, we are in times that we never anticipated. But what we do know is that in the midst of those times, we have received uh, uh, the good news 
that you made a promise a long, long ago, and you fulfilled that promise in Jesus. Now, certainly, we are looking forward to the day where that's a, there's complete fulfillment of that, where um, these sorts of events that threaten lives of the old, old and young alike are no more. But in the meantime, remind us that we've received that promise not as a bucket to keep track of the amount of goodness that you've been to us, but to instead open up the spigot of our lives so that we might convey, share that blessing of your love and grace with uh, everyone around us. So we got to uh, hear all the prayers that will be uttered, and we trust you to be with us uh, as you were with Abram, and as Jesus said you would be until the end of the age. Amen. All right. See you in about a half hour. Thanks, Paul. Yep, thanks.